This video is brought to you by The Vine on YouTube and by The Storyteller on Facebook. The relationship between AA groups and clubs. GSO Box 459, Grand Central Station. New York, New York, 10163 AA. The General Service Office of Alcoholics Anonymous serves as the repository of AA experience and is the publisher of AA conference approved literature and service material. We are available as a resource to AA members and groups and share collective AA experience upon request. We are not a governing body. Each group is autonomous and has the opportunity to study A.A.S. traditions and decide how it will apply these to local matters. Clubs are not affiliated with Alcoholics Anonymous, and the relationship of AA groups and clubs is one of landlord and tenant. Groups that meet in clubs rent meeting space. There is usually an agreement between the group and the landlord on the terms for leasing or renting meeting space. Oftentimes, there will be some documentation to this effect. I have also included the AA guidelines on clubs below that reflect extensive shared experience and guidance from our 12 traditions. Guidelines are compiled from the shared experience of AA members in various service areas. They also reflect guidance given through the 12 traditions and the General Service Conference, US and Canada. In keeping with our tradition of autonomy, except in matters affecting other groups or AA as a whole, most decisions are made by the group conscience of the members involved. The purpose of these guidelines is to assist in reaching an informed group conscience. These guidelines are for AA members responsible for clubs and similar facilities that provide meeting space for one or more AA groups. Club members in AA groups must respect A.A.S. 12 traditions, including the long form of Tradition 3 that defines an AA group. Our membership ought to include all who suffer from alcoholism. Hence we may refuse none who wish to recover. Nor ought AA membership ever depend on money or conformity. Any two or three alcoholics gathered together for sobriety may call themselves an AA group, provided that, as a group, they have no other affiliation. The relationship between a club and an AA group is mutually beneficial when all involved respect the autonomy of the group. Members of a group may also be club members, and pay dues to enjoy the privileges of the club. However, there are no dues or fees for membership in an AA group and each group is self-supporting concerning rental payments for meeting space, coffee arrangements, and literature. Since the early days, there have always been a A.A.S. who have sought a place to go for coffee and conversation, a spot where members could gather for lunch, a place where they could gather socially on weekends and holidays. In 1947, Bill W. wrote a great bite article on clubs that became part of our pamphlet A.A. Tradition, How It Developed. The title carried the question, Clubs in A.A. A. Are they with us to stay? Today, the answer to that question can be yes. The success and the endurance of the club idea can be ascribed to the wisdom and guidance expressed in Bill's article and to the willingness of club-minded A.A.S. to help make them work. These A.A.S. make it possible for a club to function effectively without detracting from A.A.S. source of recovery, the AA group. 
Experience demonstrates that a club can live in harmony with the AA community and serve a very useful purpose for those who find a club helpful. Getting started. Even though a club is not A.A, .A, many will think of the club as A.A, .A .A, particularly the non-A.A.S in your community. While it is suggested that the name of the club not involve AA, the club members stick carefully to A.A.S 12 traditions and accept funds only from club members. Naturally, this excludes any kind of fundraising that would involve the public. Dues and contributions from club members keep the club going, besides, to rent money from AA groups that hold their meetings in the club. Frequently, there is a temptation for a club to accept building materials, furniture, and kitchen equipment and supplies from well-meaning, civic-minded non-A.A.S. Everyone in the club will want to re respect Tradition 7 in the principle of self-support that has brought AA along to this point completely independent and financially sound. Define the purpose of the club and look for space that will meet the club's needs. Determine the amount of money needed for such an operation, and work out a budget that will cover getting started, rent, utilities, custodial care, and any other known expenses. Call a meeting of all interested A.A.S, separate from an AA group meeting. Discuss the plans and financial needs, and determine how many dues-paying members can be counted on from the beginning. Also, ask the local AA group or groups whether they would be interested in renting space from the club for meetings and, if so, how much rent they would consider reasonable. Sometimes, charter members of the club are willing to pay a little more in the beginning to help get the club off the ground. It seems better to ask all to participate in this financing than for one or two people to assume this responsibility. Let every AA participate who wants to so that the club has the support of many members. At this meeting, you might also determine qualifications for club membership. Most clubs require 30 days of AA sobriety, while a few require 90 days. But new A.A.S may use the club facilities as guests until they qualify for club membership. All dues-paying members are normally eligible to hold office and to vote at the club business meetings. What kind of directors? During the initial meeting, ask interested members to consider two more questions, who will serve as club directors, and what? Should their qualifications be? Directors handle the business affairs of the club, is responsible for the lease and pay all bills for maintenance of the property. Many clubs require approximately three years AA sobriety for directors. Most agree that AA members serving as club directors should not hold offices in the AA group's meeting in the club. This practice avoids confusion and conflicts. Business decisions. If enough AA.A.S are interested to make financing possible, it is time to consult a lawyer and have the club incorporated as a non-profit business organization, under the rules of the state or province in which it will function. Needless to say, a club so incorporated should not have A.A. .A in its name. This should not be a very complicated or expensive project. Incorporation is following Tradition 6, which implies that property to be used by A.A.S should be separately incorporated and managed, lest problems of money, property, and prestige divert AA from its primary purpose. If bank loans are necessary, they are held by directors of the corporation, and payments are made from club funds. It is better to start small and enlarge as growth and finances warrant. After the club is incorporated, a meeting of the directors may be held to determine details of club operation. This might be followed by a meeting of dues-paying members to obtain approval of overall plans and club rules. Gambling. Many difficulties have been caused in already existing clubs over the years because of gambling, and in some cases, publicity and notoriety have resulted. Because so many club members are also AA members, this kind of thing can be damaging to AA. Card games, billiards, table tennis, and TV watching are activities that many club members enjoy if they are played for the fun of it, not for money, gambling, placing bets, etc. Experience proves that intergroup or central offices, answering services, and central service committees need to be separate from clubs, physically separate and separate as far as the administration is concerned. In some cases, a newly formed intergroup or central office is invited to use club facilities. At that point, A.A.S should take a good look at tra Tradition 9 and remember that a service office is responsible to all AA groups and members, while a club is responsible chiefly to its dues-paying members and the groups that rent. Space from the club. AA groups meeting in clubs. The AA group, the importance of each group's maintaining its autonomy and identity separate from the club in which it meets cannot be emphasized too strongly. 
The group's responsibility is to the suffering alcoholic and the fellowship as a whole, rather than to the club. To fulfill this primary purpose, the group uses a name different from that of the club. The group is self-supporting through its contributions. This includes paying a fair rent for use of the facilities, maintaining a separate treasury, and making its contributions directly to the local central slash intergroup office, the district, the area general service committee, and to GSO. Remember, an AA group is available to any alcoholic, as the only requirement for group membership is a desire to stop drinking. Even though the group meets in a club that may be composed exclusively of AA members, and many members of the group may be club members, too, the relationship of the AA group itself to the club should be the same as it would be to a church, hospital, school, or other facilities in which it might rent space for its meetings. Conference Recommendations A discussion on clubs during the 1967 General Service Conference Noted that, although there is no such thing as an A.A club, many Clubs have been identified with AA because they are often organized and directed by AA members and membership may be limited to AAS clubs where meetings are held and which are maintained for the 12th step, as well as social purposes, can avoid difficulties by abiding by AA traditions. Conference members agreed that clubs should not use the AA name, should be organized apart from AA, and should not accept money from outside sources, is supported by membership dues and individual contributions from AA members. The question of a paid membership in AA does not arise since AA meetings held in clubs are open to all. Further guidance was given by the 1972 General Service. The conference, which advised that GSO no longer accept contributions from clubs. This decision was based on returns from a questionnaire sent to all clubs. The answers indicated that the difference in club operating procedures was too great to enable GSO to decide whether or not money received from a particular club was contributed by AA members only. Of course, GSO does accept contributions from AA groups that meet on club premises. In 1989, the General Service Conference recommended discontinuing listing clubs in AA directories. However, groups that meet in clubs will continue to be listed in the directories. 5 m 10 slash 9 PS, MG03. This video is brought to you by The Vine on YouTube and by The Storyteller on Facebook. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, share, make comments, and love feedback.